If yesterday was all about the changes in challenge, then day three was all about the changes in historic trophy. Despite the impending wet weather, the day started fine for Matthew Robinson. Marion Evans was quicker by 19 seconds through the first stage, but Robinson returned forward to take the next, only to have Evans apply the pressure and grab the stage win, coming into the lunchtime service. Marion Evans wasn't giving anything away, but his teammate Roger Chilman, driving Evans' 2016 winning escort, was having a mixed morning. Well, the car, the car obviously is fantastic, and Marion has told me that I've got to look after it and not dent it. Um, so we're doing all right with that so far. When we just keep out of trouble and um, uh, keep it on the straight and narrow, we seem to be um, capable of setting some all right times. So um, we'll see if we can find some more third fasters. Medium right onto a single lane bridge again. Medium right. So, speaking of keeping it on the straight and narrow, I hear a rumour you hit a wee moment. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we dropped, a, I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Um, we were just coming up to a crest and we were far too quick into a left hander. Fortunately, there was a, um, a cattle grid and a drive straight, straight ahead. So we went through the tape and um, did a little pirouette in the field and then came back out again. So um, it, was all, it was all okay, but um, we don't have too many of those. So what did the boss think? Um, about the mistake, um, I, I don't think... Uh, I can't see <laughs> yeah, I can't see anything going. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I'm not saying anything. That's a silly question. <laughs> He did manage third fastest time through SS18. Every silver fur in the position of fifth has almost always been the domain of Brent Rolston, and this year looks like being right on track. Certainly sheltering from the rain at service would have you think he was in his comfort zone. Yeah, we're having a, we, we set out to a certain policy for this event. We wanted to do all the stages without stopping, which would be a complete rarity. We've done seven silver ferns, done all of them, and in each event we've, we've stopped on at least one stage. So, so far it's working well. We've done two and a half days and we haven't stopped, which is kind of cool. Uh, and yeah, we just like being around that sort of sixth, seventh uh, position overall for the classics. You then have a road position around eight, nine, 10, 12, which is really kind of cool. Ironically, he would finish the day in fifth. Challenge leader Charlie Evans had Brent Taylor right on his tail in the opening round, but the GT86 driver had his measure next stage. Brian Stokes, who had been holding down second outright, failed to finish SS20 after lunch, allowing Fern rookie Mike Goldsbury up into second. And previous challenge winner Dave Strong elevated to third. Any thoughts of another win for Strong will need the 18 minute gap reduced over the next five days. Everything happened for Historic though in SS20. Jeff Judd was first to the midpoint. No car one or car two, they have both been caught out within the first few kilometres of the stage. Lead car on the road, Matthew Robinson, found the tightening corner first. Sam Collis attempted to get out of the car, but was forced back by an incoming Shane Merland. Merlin's escort cleared Robinson's, rolled into the Blackberries and out of the event. All Robinson needed was a tow, and that wasn't far away. Matthew, you'll be pretty pleased to see this back in service. Not as pleased as I was to see that farmer with the tractor, I'll tell you. Unbelievable. Um, we, where we went off, there was a, there was a house and the, the guy came out, he had his quad bike there and he said he's got a tractor and I said, said uh, 
wait till the last car's gone. That's spot on. I said, get that rope on there as quick as you can. And it, yeah, um, the recovery guys came, put a winch on it as well, so it didn't, because it was on the point of falling over, you see where it was. So there, the farmer, he put a strap on, onto the wheel, the winch guy pulled it as well. We were out, we're back in the car and we were gone. Jeff Judd had been next on the scene, but managed to avoid joining what could have been a car park. Well, it was a reasonably fast approach to sort of a, I'd call it a right kink. And um, I hung my rear wheel off and nearly went in and joined Robinson, because at that stage, I only knew he was in there. I didn't realise Merlin was in there until we got to the finish. I, I sort of thought there weren't that many marks on the road, but it, yeah, Stefan told me there was something white down there, and then we realised it was uh, Shane. Uh, we, we just sort of went down and rolled into the Blackberry. That was a very soft sort of landing, this, this eight foot high Blackberry. So yesterday was getting the mail and today was picking blackberries. Picking blackberries, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, my wife loves making blackberry jam, I just tried to get her some blackberries. And if the day wasn't exciting enough, believe it or not, Peter Sharmick had another fire. This time at the front of the car at Final Check-In in Awakuni. Fortunately, plenty of dry powder on hand and time to make more repairs tonight. Likewise, Robinson is in for repairs too. Not to the bodywork after is off, but the BDG engine that they're going to replace overnight. That's what it's there for, so I'll have to use it. 